Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rotten Horror Picture Show, a podcast where we talk about films off of Rotten Tomatoes' 200 best horror movies list. I'm still trying to figure out my way around saying that every time so it <laughs> sounds right, but I got it right that time. Good job. My name is Clay, and with me always is Amanda. Amanda, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm not bad. I'm not bad. I'm actually... So uh, when I do these shows, specifically the ones that I start myself or angle to start myself, mm. uh, I usually have an ulterior motive to an extent because there's usually one thing that I want to talk about eventually okay. that is the genesis for the whole project. So, And, like, and what was that? When we were doing um, Real Ripe and Real Rotten... Uh, we started doing the B-rolls, which is like not the highest, not the lowest, but like something in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically because I wanted to talk about Man on Fire, the Tony Scott movie. Mm. Um, and this movie we're doing today is one of those movies. Oh, really? It is, yes. Um, we usually go from, we take at <laughs> random, we do a number off of the 200 best horror movie list on Rotten Tomatoes, but every five, uh, to steal a phrase from the Yacht Rock podcast, we go wild <laughs> on the fives. <laughs> Oh, and God. pick something that is uh, not on the list, but is noteworthy to um, either of us. Uh, and I got the ch- first choice, and my choice was a movie from 2014, a movie called Starry Eyes, which has a 73% Rotten Tomatoes rating. Uh, and you have not, you had not seen it before, right? No, I'd never even heard of this. Good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I see. This is what you know. One of the reasons why I like talking about. If we've seen it before and how we came to it is because I mm-hmm. feel like horror movies, for whatever reason, are the only genre of movies that really lend themselves to uh, being passed down person to person. Yes. You know, like what well, the first time I ever saw The Evil Dead was on a, uh, a VHS without a cover. That, yeah. that I borrowed from Sean Cordy's brother, <laughs> brother I think. So, it, you know, it's one of perfect, those things. Perfect origin story. Yeah, and then you take that tape and you tell your friend, you're like, you got to see this weird movie. Yeah. But, you know, and uh, this is one of those movies. I feel it's. I feel like it's harder and harder to do that stuff nowadays. Yeah, I mean because everything is so. It's digital, yeah. and it's all available on the internet. I'm but... a, I'm a big fan of the hunt for stuff like this. Yeah, and uh, it's harder and harder to do with everything available and streaming. So I had never heard of this movie myself, mm-hmm. and it was recommended to me by a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, and I generally, I don't know how you feel about modern, more modern horror movies, but I. I feel like horror is a genre where everybody it's it's kind of like rock and roll a little bit where everybody's waiting for the next Led Zeppelin or mm-hmm. like everybody's thinking about like oh my god back in the 70s it, it was the best we had the best music It's a yet. very nostalgia prone yeah, genre. Yeah. It's it's nostalgia prone but it's also like hungry for something that reaches that height. Yeah. You know, the bands coming out of the 70s depending on what your taste in music. Generally there's a period where it's like that was the best and nothing has hit that point yeah. since then. Yeah. But you're always looking for it. And I feel like horror is the one genre where that is like no one's no one's going like, "Man, I just wish they made dramas like Kramer versus Kramer, you know? <laughs> or I wish they made comedies like yeah. Major League still. Yeah, I mean, whatever do, happened but... to those rom-coms? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're still yeah. there. But for some reason, horror is a genre where I do that, mm-hmm. you know? And I think every time someone new who kind of does an okay movie yeah. gets talked about as like, oh, this guy, this is it. This is the yeah. next big thing. And I feel like a lot of times those really don't work for me. Well, for- I mean, yeah, and, and they tend to, they tend to maybe they didn't work for you personally or for me personally, but mm-hmm. those kinds of moments tend to be really zeitgeisty and and important to the genre. Like mm. like the Saw movies when the sure. Saw movies started, it was like, oh my god, the future of See, horror that- has arrived. The Blair Witch yep. that was a mm-hmm. big one. Um, yeah, that so, stuff yeah. I do get behind that stuff. Like those mm. those zeitgeisty ones. That's what I think people are looking for, and mm-hmm. it happens so infrequently. Like I would say, Jordan Peele's movies are probably yeah. in that same pocket of like this is, this is what we're looking for. Yes, and whoever did, oh God, what is it? Ari Ari Aster who did? Oh yeah, Hereditary? Uh, yes, yeah. Hereditary and Midsummer. Yes, and uh, the guy who did The Witch, whose name escapes me. Mm, damn. Damn, I should know that one. Yeah, I really should. Anyway. He's great. Whatever his name is, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> uh, but as far as like less than top tier horror, like the sort of indie horror, yeah, I feel like people give a lot of these movies a lot of leeway. Um, 
And the movies that people talk about as being like, ooh, this is the next thing, generally mm. don't hit that mark for me. And I think a lot mm. of indie horror is not really that good. Are you talking specifically within the last, like, say, five to ten years or just in general? I would say ten to twenty, just in general. Okay. Like, I, fr- from the point where I really started, I felt like I had exhausted all of the best stuff that had existed. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, all right, I'm ready for the new stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nothing has really... Uh, really done it for me in a really satisfying way and i'm not and that's a this is not just a long way of me saying that i think this is the greatest movie ever made (laughs) but (laughs) my point of that whole spiel is generally when people or or i get recommended a new horror movie Mm -hmm. i think okay this is probably going to be fine yeah uh fine to bad generally okay and this movie is this movie starry eyes i was so surprised by it Mm. Um, I think it's probably my favorite horror movie of the last 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Of uh, I should say, yeah, uh, 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 s- sort of like B-level horror movie. Like not, not the big budget stuff, but okay. as far as like a sort of indie, lower budget, you know, this is something you're going to find in a bin somewhere. Okay. I think this movie's great. Yeah, it's, yeah. Made, made by relative unknowns. Yeah. 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 And uh, which was, that's why it was that much more depressing when I saw the Pet Cemetery remake that these guys did and it was yeah. not great. <laughs> I have um, not seen that and I don't really want to. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. It's okay. okay. It has, it has, it has <laughs> third act problems. Oh, oh, no. Anyway, uh, we're going to play the trailer for you real quick for Starry Eyes and then we're going to come back and talk about it. Welcome to Big Taters. My name is Sarah. Can I start you guys off with an order of our Freedom Tots? We got all these people, all our friends, they're just sitting around trying to figure out what to do, trying to figure out how to make something. I thought you were avoiding me. Why would you think that? Because I stole your role. Come on with you lately. I work so hard. Every week it's a new class, a new audition. Hopefully you'll see something in me. I know I'd be great for this. We'll be in touch. takes for this role. All right, Starry Eyes. Directors, Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmeyer, written by Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmeyer, starring Alex Esso, Amanda Fuller, Noah Segan, and some others. Amanda, what happens in Starry Eyes? A hopeful young starlet uncovers the ominous origins of the Hollywood elite and enters into a deadly agreement in exchange for fame and fortune. Mm, yes. So I think this time, Clay, you should do the things you can find in this yes. movie. Uh, if you, you will like this movie if you like uh, Suffocation by Chain Restaurant. <laughs> uh, most likely questionable parenting because yeah, it seems yeah. to be running through these I th- kids. I, th- I think it's a given in yeah. this one. I mean, one guy lives in a van. I mean, <laughs> he's obviously he's, he has some issues. <laughs> Something went wrong around yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, demonic Condescension. And sudden onset maggot vomiting. <laughs> Demonic condescension is probably my new favorite phrase in the English language. If I if I can get that on the box of the movie, <laughs> yeah. I will, this will be a success for me. Yes. So, um, what did you think of Starry Eyes? I liked it more than I thought I was going to. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, like I said, I had never heard of it. Um, 
And I will say the cover image mm. does not do the film itself justice. Nope, it's not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I looked at it and it looked like a very um, early to mid 2000s horror movie where mm-hmm. there was going to be some sort of psycho with a knife involved. And it was. Technically, there is. Yeah, but... <laughs> there is, but it's not the psycho with a knife that I expected. No, no. Um, I was impressed with. I was really impressed with it visually. Mm. Like I, I thought it was a surprisingly beautiful movie. Yeah, there, it looks really nice. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of scenes where it's just actually really lovely, and I kind of just wanted to like, especially the pool scene where she's mm-hmm. uh, taken some unknown substance, and uh, her and her friends have decided to go uh, PG thirteen skinny dipping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, in the pool, even though they all have swimsuits. Uh, but it's but it's very like lovely and just just beautiful and there's something sort of hypnotic about a lot of it, which mm-hmm. I really appreciated. Um, but I have to ask. So you said a friend recommended this to you. Mm-hmm. What were your expectations going into it? Um, I was more or less in the same boat you were. I don't yeah. think I I don't think I watched a trailer. I don't remember if I had or not. Uh, mm-hmm. But I saw the cover and the cover looks like. You know, it's starry eyes. It's a picture of a woman with like stars carved into her eyes, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, you like know? upside down pentagrams. Yeah, it's scarred about as, into her eyes. It's about as stock an image. If you handed, if you handed uh, the art, the graphic designer or something who was in charge of this poster and said, "It's a horror movie called Starry Eyes." Here's yeah. a picture of the woman. They're like, okay, we'll throw some scars. You know, knife ca- yeah. carved her stars in her eyes. Her face will be very white. Yeah, the background will be very black. Yeah. Um, it looked. It looked to me. Did, have you ever seen the movie uh, Frailty? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looked like the cover of Frailty. Yeah, that's on the Except, list. I think. Well, I think we'll be think doing it that eventually. It is yeah. actually, which kind of surprised me. But anyway, um, which is something I'd like to bring up, maybe in a few minutes. But continue. okay. Uh, no, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I feel like some of it. I just was kind of a little, like, I hated her friends. Sure. To yeah. such a huge extent that I I only felt bad for Tracy. Yes. In the end. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's um I think it's it's sort of I think it's very clearly broken up into four parts, more or less. Mm. Which are uh here hold on a second, I wrote it down here. Um <laughs> which are uh you know, her day to day life, her mm-hmm. death. Uh, her sacrifice and her rebirth, mm. and uh, generally the 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 breakdown of the story, if you haven't seen it, is uh, it's this this woman. She's an actress, struggling actress, mm-hmm. um, who has high hopes for her career. Yes, uh, and it's not going anywhere. She thinks she deserves to be the next Marilyn Monroe. Mm-hmm. She clearly is more obsessed with fame than being like an actress. Like it's not the art that she's into. Yeah. It's the, it's the, the result. Yeah. 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 And uh she ends up, you know, going down the route of the Faustian Faustian mm-hmm. bargain with this pervy producer who turns out to be like a witchcraft guy. And uh she <laughs> she I would essentially say a satanic cult. Yeah, leader? satanic cult guy, yeah. Yeah. And uh after she makes the deal with this guy, you know, quote unquote, uh she Seals the deal. goes through this horrible body death essentially yeah um and then she in order to complete the her whole thing she has to sacrifice something so she kills all of her friends then they bury her and she comes back as this like beautiful mannequin starlet looking thing yeah. who is going to be the uh the, that this movie producer and his minions are going to turn it so uh, supposedly turn into some star or something yes and um i think Three out of the four parts work really well for me. Okay. The one I don't think works that well is the part, there's the sacrifice section where she kills all of her friends. Because mm. the first time that I saw this, my main takeaway was I thought it was really interesting. I thought the beginning stuff with her auditioning and all of the, the uh, to kind of go back to your, what you were saying before, I don't think you're mm. supposed to like the friends. I don't necessarily because they're kind of sh- they're kind of shitty and they're oh, yeah. shitty in a very specific 
kind of way yeah. that uh, at least I recognize as someone who works in a creative industry and who went to art school. They seem like art school kids. They're frenemies. Yeah. yeah. Like one one of the girls, I think the the uh, the one girl who's constantly belittling her. Erin. Yeah. I thought she was good. I like that. Oh, yeah. I thought that was great. Um, but yeah, like, you know, the one guy's got a script he's talking about, everybody's yeah, going to be a part yeah. of, but they're never going to make that movie. You know, and there's the other, the, the dark haired dude who's just like either muttering into a microphone with his shitty spoken word or he's yeah. like kind of drunk or high, just sort of wandering around. Yeah. And, and they're all, they're always talking about the great things they're going to do, but they're never going to do any of them. And it reminds yeah. It, it, it reminded me of a call in college party at, at oh. art school. Oh, God. Which yeah. I can tell you, if anyone wants to know the number <laughs> one piece of advice about going to art school or some sort of art based school, mm-hmm. beware going to a party that features improv kids because it is exhausting. <laughs> it is exhausting. <laughs> As somebody who has known and loved several improv kids in in my life, I can attest to the same. Yeah. Like they're wonderful, lovely people, but they just they have a level of energy I'm never going to match. All the world is a stage, apparently, because yes, it's just all the time. Oh, yikes! Anyway, um, so I I really enjoyed the first section where they get into uh, her day to day life and mm-hmm. her insecurities as an actress Mm -hmm. and i think she's a really unique character because it's not like she's it's not like you're the way they kind of generally play these sort of you know uh deal with the devil type movies yeah where the person makes a rash decision Mm. um and then ultimately regrets the decision and has to pay for it Mm. she backs out of the of sealing the deal the first time yes but she is feels like she's she has such a sen- such an ego and uh yeah. and is so condescending and yeah. thinks that she's so much better than everyone else around her that yeah. she just she wants to jump the line mm-hmm. and once she jumps the line once she figures out what's going on she's totally in yeah eventually. yeah there, yeah there's not really a lot of hesitation once 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 she's to that point mm-hmm. um yeah, I, th- I think this movie is interesting for the fact that it's very rare that we get movies where a the main character is female, but most importantly, she's kind of unlikable. Yeah, like there, there's not a lot of that. You usually think... you get the sort of like um, Sydney and Scream, sure. who's sort of benign, or you get a uh, Nancy in in nightmare who's just the sort of all american right, girl who's right. trying her best even when she messes up you you don't often get this like main character who is even when she's being nice and kind of sweet as this movie i think very adeptly teases out she is very egotistical and yeah. condescending and 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 kind of does think she's better than her peers yeah i think i think they do a really nice trick because uh they they when you go into this mm-hmm. you immediately like her yeah you know yeah. she she seems very likable and she, she seems, seems very like normal yeah. like 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 there's that very first scene uh where she's in her underwear in front of the mirror mm-hmm. and she looks like she's about to break down and cry right because she's looking at herself in the mirror and she's kind of pinching her stomach and like that 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 scene was just devastating yeah. because like I mean I personally have been there and I am nowhere near as as skinny as her and I probably never have been mm-hmm. and to see somebody Wait, that mm-hmm was not to uh, no no that was not a confirmation that you've I'm, never been skinny. look I'm gonna give you a pass on that one don't worry I'll get you back later <clears throat> it, it's <clears throat> fine um but I I just think it's a very relatable experience not just for women but for men as well like we, mm-hmm. we live in such a an image obsessed culture that i think it's really easy for all of us to judge each other ju- judge ourselves so harshly like yeah. you look at her in that scene and she's gorgeous and she's got essentially like the ideal body right and she still looks she really looks like she's gonna she's gonna cry in that moment and then when you find out she's an actress yeah it makes even more sense because yeah. you know that that adds a heightened level of uh pressure and stuff and you 
it gets you to empathize with her very quickly. Yes. Yeah. You start on this kind of high note of feeling like, oh, my God, this poor girl. Yeah. And you follow her to her job. And her boss is the way they, they play the boss or, uh, at first. She works at essentially Hooters. Yes. The way they play the boss is kind of kind of a kind of a perv. Yeah. Like he's yeah. checking out her butt and stuff. I sort of like yeah, the, the first time or two you see him on screen. I was very like, oh, God. Yeah. And the thing that's kind of really clever about this is the more time you spend with her, the mm. more you realize how much she kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, you know? there, there is this very- Even the party, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, please. Even the party that they go to, that first party, mm-hmm. uh, the the guys at the party are kind of creeping on her a little yeah. bit. And it definitely comes off as as- as though you're supposed to empathize with her and she's in mm-hmm. a, she's constantly surrounded with pressures from the outside. Yeah. Which I'm not saying she's not. Yeah. But the longer you spend with her, you see, well, she, yeah, she's an actress, but she's not, she doesn't really, I mean, maybe she cares about the art, but I don't know. Uh, the guy who owns the, the, the manager of her job mm-hmm. actually takes the job really seriously. Yeah. And is just trying to do, have a nice run a nice business and she's kind of being a bitch to him yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah well uh, yeah and the friends even are the friends are kind of shitty but they're not specifically shitty to her you know it's yeah. just like or or they are like in the case of Aaron. sure who, she like, definitely is yes but 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 it's kind but it's kind of great that she is like yeah. so i i think the thing that this movie does really well is at the beginning of the movie you you are very much seeing the world through Sarah's point of view without it being very obvious that you are. Yeah. So you're seeing her job and her friends and her surroundings, how she sees them. Mm-hmm. And then I think gradually over the course of the film, you start, th- th- that, that starts to sort of pivot and yeah. you start to get, a slightly more realistic view on her actual circumstances yeah. where, you know, the the boss at her job doesn't like, you know, all right, he might be a little pervy, might be checking out her butt, but he's not a bad guy. Yeah. Like in the, in the moment where she's begging for her job back, I really was worried it was going to diverge into him also asking right. for like some sort of sexual favor. Which is what the producer does. If Which is what the pr- producer does. figured that out from context clues. <laughs> but he doesn't, you know, right. he, he, yeah. he, what he asks of her is to treat the job with respect, to, mm-hmm. to understand that, yes, you have your dream, but this is the job that lets you pursue that dream right. by being able to afford to live. And also, this is important to me. This is not just my day job. This is my career. This right. is my creation. Um, and I thought that was an interesting turn. And and then in the in that sort of third act where she is sacrificing her friends, there there's the two, the guy and the girl who are sort of ditzy and in the background for a lot of the film, who you don't get a lot more from. But there's Erin who she has a confrontation with her in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And when Erin turns on the light, even though they've been having this conversation where they've been really cutting into each other verbally, um, the minute Erin sees her and sees what she looks like, she drops all of it and just is like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, honey, we need to get you to a hospital. Right. Like, she doesn't give a shit that they were fighting. She doesn't care if there's a rivalry or jealousy between them anymore. All she sees is her friend who looks really, really unwell mm-hmm. and who needs help and she's going to help her. Even if she doesn't consider Sarah the main character, mm-hmm. isn't, even if Aaron doesn't consider Sarah like capital F her friend, mm-hmm. she's still a decent enough person to realize there's right. something wrong. Right. You know, like she's not going to take this opportunity to, you know, kick her when she's down. Right. It's one thing to be like sort of shitty to each other in that like competitive, right. we're both in the same realm, we're both around the same age, we're both white girls with long brown hair mm-hmm. we're kind of going up for the same roles so we have to compete to with one another it's just easier to not be friends and yeah. to just be rivals that's a different set of circumstances than life or death yes and erin recognizes that and i don't think sarah does i think to no, sarah, sarah no. they're the same thing yeah so the sarah very much uh her friends are harmless 
Yes. But she sees them as worthless. Yeah. And that's a really good way of putting it. And there's a a I think there's a relationship between where she is in her career mm-hmm. and what she thinks about the people around her that she thinks that they are pulling her down. Mm. And so she also thinks that she's the it's one of those things where it's like she recognizes that the level she's on is the same as these people who th- she thinks is worthless. Yeah. And that in turn makes her feel shitty about herself. Yeah. But she also thinks she should she doesn't deserve this. She's much better than this even though she's never done mm. anything. And you know, I I see that <laughs> yeah, that's stuff. That's a good point. <laughs> I've seen that stuff all the time. You know, it's like I I, I give actors so much credit for going on auditions because mm. they do a really great job in this of showing how brutal that process can be i mean obviously it's a little heightened but you know putting your art i have a hard enough time sending someone an email with a portfolio link mm. you know that's stressful enough yeah having to actually go in front of someone and and perform your art for them yeah and hope that maybe they give you a call back so you can do it again and again and again that's just that's i would pull my hair out too which yeah. is, you know, what she does afterwards. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've I've seen people in in my in my career who kind of act this way, where it's like whether whether or not you see them in person or online or something. There's, there's some people who will look around and go, oh, I'm better than all these people, and but they're not, mm. and they feel like they can jump the line, yeah, and they're willing to do anything to do that, and it's not a healthy mindset to be in because it's. A competition, but it's also not a competition when it comes down to, you know, the peop- the relationships with the people that you have. And yeah. Stuff. And um, I think her, like the, uh, that scene where um, where she's confronted, she's confronted by Aaron, and you know she's sick, and they turn the light on. Mm-hmm. Even in that state, uh, uh, or or before it's before she turns the light on, I think when they're arguing, and she's yeah. like, "You think I slept with who? Whatever for a part, you know? Yeah, you did that. That's what you did, right?" And her response is, "But the thing I'm doing is really important. It's a gateway part. Yeah, it sh- <laughs> yeah. They, and Aaron really sums it up well. Where it's, I think they kind of yeah, they, she calls it. She's like, sounds like prostitution to yeah. me. And before that, she like just saying everything that was involved in a line. Yeah, in a way that they haven't really done really makes it." puts an uh puts the nail into it where she's like you slept with a producer for a part in a movie called the silver scream yeah and she's like it's yeah. a gateway part it's yeah, really yeah, important exactly you know and it's that it's that sort of uh what's the word i'm looking for arrogance i guess yeah if that sarah has that comes out very slowly and turns her from what would be the hero in most movies yes into the villain of the movie yeah and uh, I just think it's I think it's really clever. Even that scene you're talking about um, when she goes to get her job back. Mm. Um, she's such a dick to him. Yeah. You know? She's like, you want me to beg for this job? Yeah. And, you know, that hurts him. Yeah. And he's kind of, you know, he's kind of a doofus, sure. but he's not a bad person. Yeah. You know, he's not uh, actively trying to oppress her or anything. Yeah. You know, he even says to her, he's like, you know, I've got a lot of people who applied for this. I don't have to give you a job back. You know, so he kind of. Yeah, which, 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 I mean, there's definitely a level of like, what kind of person are you that you started a business that involves objectifying very young women sure. for well, the yeah. entertainment of men? That's true. So th- there is a level of like sleaze to I, that guy. I took him to be like a franchise owner where it's like <laughs> he owns that branch of big taters or whatever it's called. <laughs> And so it's like, that's just what he does. He didn't start I mean, it, but still, I, maybe, I understand what you're saying. Maybe, but he talks about the catchphrases and the things that the girls just taking, are expected taking the initiative, to say. Innovating. And he's like, that's me. And it's like, <laughs> okay, guy. All right. Yeah. Which I, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just I'm just saying I don't blame her for being like, oh, sure. Yeah. Really? It's not It's not <laughs> like, a great job. No, do you want me to devote job. my life to this job? Because I'm not going to. Yeah. Because you'll fire me the minute a wrinkle shows up on me. Yeah. And I mean, um, she wears skin tight pants that look like the skin of a potato. I mean, you know. Also, I just can't imagine doing a, an entire shift as a waitress in those fucking heels. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, But I was going to say something that that's really interesting that, that related to what you were saying a minute ago is the the feeling that Sarah hates her friends and resents her friends mm-hmm. so much because she sees the things 
that she hates the most about herself in them. Yeah. Like it's it's a movie that's very um egocentric yes. from Sarah's point of view, yeah. not just in terms of being arrogant or condescending, but she just can't she can't believe that she's one of these people. She can't believe that this is her life. She can't admit at any point that she's wrong or right. she's not going to make it or that what she's doing might be wrong. And it, it's just like the levels of obsession and desperation that happen in this movie, I think are really fascinating. I think yeah. it's, it says something very much about like, at what point does a passion for something become an obsession? Right. And at what point does ambition for something become desperation? Right, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. I think those are very fine lines, and yeah. and obviously she crosses them. Oh yeah, big like, time. very far. Uh, and it's it's I, it's interesting too because it's like it's like they crafted a character. They're like, what if her main uh, characteristic is that she's really inconsiderate? Because that, <laughs> I mean, she you know she like we've been kind of saying she is she's not taking stock of of. She's only thinking about herself. Yeah. And she doesn't, what I like about it is, and I think a lot of other movies, they would put more of a, 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 a um, they would really kind of hit you over the head with that a little bit more. Yeah. Where in this one, you kind of get that through her actions and interactions with people, uh, whether it's the, with the boss or the friends or um, the, towards the end um, when she's talking to Tracy Mm. As she, you know, she's falling apart and she's talking, literally, she's talking to Tracy mm. and, uh, and, and she's trying to get Tracy to understand that what she's doing is, is a serious business or, or so I forget exactly what the lead in is, but Tracy's mm. like, I've been covering your rent for three months. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what, why don't you stop being an asshole to me? And, you know, right. And she, like, so, so Sarah doesn't, she thinks what she's doing is the most important thing in the world. Mm. Um, and is willing to step over everybody else to 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 do it, but doesn't doesn't take into account what the people around her are doing to help her. You know, yeah. Like she can, her job that she has allows her to pay her bills while she's doing X. Right. Her friends are there to support her, or or whatever. Yeah. Uh, while she's doing X, Tracy's covering her rent while she's doing X, but all she sees is people who are oppressing her. And it's a, it's yeah. actually a really interesting character, I think. I think so too, and I, I I think there's a buildup of resentment that's kind of hinted oh, at. Oh yeah, big time. Like early in the movie, yeah. where before she starts going through this transformation, um, where she is very, uh, she's very much a shrinking violet. She's very much a doormat. The mm -hmm. first portion of the movie, yeah. where you know Erin is is really shitty to her, and like. The whole time I was just thinking, like, why don't you just say something back? Like, my, why, don't, why don't you just say anything back instead of just going, okay. My favorite part of the movie is when uh, she comes back. Um, the other thing I love about this is how they every little bit of traction she gets, mm -hmm. she she reacts as though she just won the lottery. Yeah. You know, like, my favorite part is when she comes back from um, the – the first audition or the callback or whatever yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. going well and the other girl trips and falls and busts her nose open and she giggles and she giggles yeah. i was like oh my god that's so good and then yeah. tracy looks over and she's like what and like you know yeah, she it's yeah. like she just reacts as though this other person has been harmed while she is now she is at like a high point and she's getting you know a yes. certain amount of shine yeah. food out of it and yeah and it's sort of like ah now we are where we belong yes i am up here succeeding exactly and you just broke she's, your nose she's literally <laughs> looking down at her from yes. a balcony when yeah, that happens. yeah yeah no that's a really good point yeah and I, I think that and that's before she starts going through this sort of death and rebirth mm -hmm. I, and that's like the purest sarah in yeah. that moment where it is this sort of like, oh, you've been harboring all of these sort of petty to to less petty, but mostly petty resentments mm. against your peers and your friends rather than sort of like bucking up and talking about it and confronting people. You've just been harboring all of this inside of yourself. And the minute you feel like you have been acknowledged as superior to them, you're yeah, you're going to look down on them and you're going to laugh at their misfortune. Right. It's like. Yeah, what a great friend you are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh I I feel like the you know, I think the um that section of the movie 
probably works the best for me because I feel like mm-hmm. that's the most interesting is that all of those character dynamics and stuff and how that works. Even up through, you know, I'm a sucker for a good body horror. Yeah. And so when she starts oh, falling man. apart, I thought that stuff was really good. Yeah, that was really, really it's well brutal. done. Brutal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they were there was some stuff in there that I, I, I can't say. I, I can safely say I've never seen in a them do in a movie like this. Oh, I mean, that, for me, it was the fingernails. Yeah. I know that's kind of uh, done before, but like just when somebody's like, oh, I'm going to rip my own fingernail out now, I'm just like, nope. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Can't do it. That one. That one. At least I feel like I've said. You know, I, I saw that in the. I've seen that in the fly and a couple other things. I just there's something about yeah. it oh, that no, is so. It always so works. Horrendous. It always works. I just saw it in something yeah. else. Oh, uh, Dracula on on Netflix. Oh, they I haven't watched. I haven't watched that. What about the the Black Swan, the Hangnail? Oh, God, so good. <laughs> so good. That unfortunately I don't think is on the list. That might maybe be one it'll of my be a, fives, maybe it'll be yeah. one of your wild cards. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, there's other things that happen to her where it's like, you know, she, it's like they sat around and like, you know, she's falling apart and she's, she should probably fall apart everywhere. And it's just well, like, I think, I think she's literally rotting from the inside yeah. out. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. like, and that, that is kind of what would happen in yeah. that case. Like yeah. you would have all sorts of gross shit coming out of all your orifices. Sure would. So there you go. Let's... Bleeding out of your wherever. As it the wasn't would say. even really blood. <laughs> I don't know it what was it was. Just <laughs> sort of like m- liquefied organs. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Yeah, it was real nasty. Um, you know, I think that stuff works works really well. Uh, it's when they get to the part where they call her on the phone, and she's like, "I'm dying," and he's <laughs> like, "Yeah, we know you're dying. You got to go kill your friends now." I kind of love that guy though. The, the producer? Ca- oh, he's, he's the casting, really good. The casting yeah. director, not the producer. I'm sorry, the casting director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, where With he's the bow tie. just this, yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, I kind of love Doing him. Doing the uh, Patrick just... Bateman impression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like a slightly more effeminate Patrick Bateman yeah. where he's a little bit like, uh, I'm sorry, you should leave now. I have an 830 res at Dorcia. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I know that guy's that guy's both the casting directors are they're amazing I think I think the casting in general in this movie was really good yeah because that guy who plays the producer oh my I don't know how you get that kind of performance out of somebody well and like does he look like that is that like a naturally occurring everything like his hair the like overly tanned skin, that kind of leathery look. Yeah. His like slightly yellowed teeth that are really prominent. And then he had these really pale eyes yeah. that stand out from his very tanned face and this like big bright very, teeth that he's yeah, always on display. He's just yeah. very, I, I, there was a line in this. Um, I think it's when Sarah's talking to Tracy mm-hmm. uh, and admits that the producer came on to her. Yeah. Uh, and Tracy says, who even does that anymore? And all I could think of was like, oh, 2014. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the the answer is everyone, everyone. apparently. Yeah. Well, Harvey Weinstein all the time. Well, you know, that's a that's a, a scene we didn't even talk about when we were talking about Sarah, because even in that scene, the mm. end of that scene is sort of her really being upset because she didn't go for it. Because she's freaking out and everything, and then Tracy's like, "Who even does that?" And she kind of goes, "Well, you know." And she's yeah, like, "You yeah. <laughs> what?" She's like, "No, you don't do that." Yeah, yeah, it's you know, it's like she's it's on the table. Yeah, she wasn't ready for it, but it's on the table. Yeah, it's 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 sort of like th- this whole movie is just very much a story about uh, a woman overcoming all of her ethics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, like leaving all of them behind. Yeah. Just finding a way to sort of rationalize her way out of all of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the uh, up through the body horror stuff, that stuff works. When they call her up mm. and they're like, you have to make the sacrifice or something. And then she goes and kills her, all of her friends and stuff. Um, I feel like that is... I don't know what else you do because you have to have. I understand that you have to have an ending to your story that involves the characters in your story. Yeah. Um, but it just felt like for a movie that wasn't really, it wasn't really like a, well, like it was pretty gory, but it wasn't like a slashery, stabby kind of gory. Yeah. And then they do that where she's going around very brutally murdering her friends. Yeah. Like, a sp- oh my God. The blonde girl in the bed when she's oh yeah she crawls on top of her 
with the weight yeah. poised over her head That's and then shot. waits yeah. for her to wake up. Yeah. Which is the most fucked up thing. Is like you you could have just bashed her in the head could've, and killed yeah. her when she was asleep and spared her the pain, but it's like, oh no, you wanted to hurt her. Yeah. You wanted her to suffer. Yeah. Um, I guess my my problem with that section is just like how much of a sacrifice is it for her to kill these people that she clearly hates? Right. Yeah. Like it it, it just feels I don't know. I I I I I felt it I feel almost like it it should have started with Tracy. I was like, going to say think that. That would have been a bigger sacrifice because yeah. I think t- even as she's gotten in fights with her and yelled at her throughout the movie, I think deep down she clearly cares about her and and, and knows that Tracy is like legitimately a good friend. Yeah. Um so I think that was the biggest. Like I'm I'm glad that that scene that Tracy's death kind of got its own moment, like separate from from the sort of general gore and yeah. insanity. But at the same time, I, I almost feel like that would have been more of a catalyst of like, well, now that I've killed her, the one person I did actually care about, sure. then yeah. who gives a fuck about these people? Yeah, I would say it could go either way. Like I, I, I say mm-hmm. you could either start with Tracy because I, I was thinking exactly what you were thinking. Mm-hmm. I think you could also end it with Tracy, but have it be almost like she has to go through everybody else to get to her. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't mean like, you know, Kill Bill style. It's just no. like <laughs> she's at this one place. Everybody else is at that place. Yeah. They end up in her way. She has to go through them, stabby, stabby, to get to yeah. the one that actually matters. But I think I think it works the other way, too, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess part of my part of my thing with the killing killing Tracy, I understand why it happened. Because I, mm. I, in my mind, that's the real sacrifice. Yeah, sure. Because there's even, you know, there there's that moment where after Sarah has killed everybody else and she's been reborn into her beautiful alopecia um she looks man- like a mannequin mannequin yeah. state um where Tracy comes in and Sarah says to her come lay down with me like old times right and it's sort of like there's there's very I know she kisses her and that's kind of how she kills her but there is something very loving mm. Like there, there's definitely hints of like, were you guys more than friends at some point? It's possible, yeah. Um, and I guess I just wish, I wish there'd been a more human moment mm. where Sarah killed her and then felt something about it. Yeah. Like before, she, like if she had done it before she transformed, where it could be like, this is really her destroying the last vestiges of her humanity. Yeah. And then killing everybody else just is sort of like, you know, you know what actually would have been nice, uh, if. You killed Tracy first, mm-hmm. which is what you what you're saying. She's like the 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 one thing that she kind of cares about. Yeah, that gives her you know uh, a bit of a uh, breaks the seal on the murderiness a bit. Right. Save Aaron for the end. Yeah. After she comes back and she's transformed. Yeah. And so she's got that like, look at me, I'm this I'm god perfect thing. Yeah. Now. And then she kills Aaron. Yeah. That where it would fun. give her this level of like, I've won. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That would be fun. No, I I agree. That's actually a really good point. I like that. Thanks. Yeah. But uh. <laughs> well, listen, thank you. Yeah. But, <laughs> Thanks. Uh. But yeah, I th- yeah that section is is the only thing that's uh, that stands out to me. I, the first time I watched it, I was. I think I was working, so I, w- I was kind of like peripherally watching it. And that, mm. even then, that scene kind of stood out to me as just, it felt just tonally different. Mm. Um, again, like, I don't know what you do, but I don't know if, if getting the knife and stabbing everybody is the way to go. I, you know, I kind of, I kind of dig it. Like, okay. I, I kind of, if you're going to talk about any movie where there's any sort of death and rebirth, especially the rebirth part. There's blood. Sure. It's just a very, yeah. There's there has to be blood. Mm-hmm. That's it's a big part of, you know, menstruation and childbirth in general. So that like, her, her real rebirth begins when the blood starts to flow. Mm-hmm. And I kind I kind of am into that. Um, yeah. and I think the kills like, for a movie that was, barely tame for the first half or even two thirds. Mm. To kind of ratchet it up at the end like that, I thought was pretty great. I like the kills are really well done. Like they're yeah, they're, oh, they're brutal. They're yeah, brutal really and good. they're bloody and they're horrifying, but yeah. they're not like silly. At right. no point did any of them feel like 
like you could you couldn't suffocating Aaron with a Ziploc bag is a little silly but <laughs> I mean it's so yeah, maybe it's, it's there I get it maybe it works. it's a little gotta, silly yeah. in concept but in in the, in the moment in it the works, moment yeah. it, it like it's not played for laughs right exactly yeah, yeah. like like it's, it's it's all presented very sincerely yeah which I don't know I I I, I liked it I thought it was well I done. think I think my problem with it is specifically that it's knife based Hmm. Um, and I kind of wish it was a little bit more, um, I don't know if visceral is the right word because that's pretty visceral. Um, say, was her smashing the other girl with the weight See, not I wish visceral there was enough more for you? Of that. Like j- giving her a knife and, and cutting and stabbing people mm. feels a little bit stock to me. Hmm. Um, if she had been a little bit more animalistic or inventive or something with the way that she was getting like smashing the girl with the thing yeah or you know i don't know something yeah you know, I, I use, guess, her, use your hands more i don't know i guess for me like honestly one, one thing i found kind of surprising about that whole section was that before just before that where she's dying in her apartment mm-hmm. she can't even stand right yeah she recovers then, pretty quickly yeah and then all of a sudden <laughs> she's like I mean, she looks like fucking hell, yeah. but she's fully dressed and manages to get herself to her friend's house and then manages to brutally murder all like five of them. Yeah. There's a, there's a moment when she's like writhing on the floor where it's like she basically dies and like yeah. falls into this like death Which is thing. A, a, and then the phone rings. Horrifyingly awesome. And then the phone rings. and like, Her like eye her twitches. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, like it's like, kind of it's like okay, whatever. Oh, but. God, <laughs> the casting, like the casting of that actress, she's great. Oh yeah. my God, and, and like it's so it's it's I know it's makeup and all of that, but like the way she transforms from this very like very beautiful, pretty like girl next door kind of girl mm. to essentially a desiccated corpse, right? Um, over the course of like an hour is really impressive. Like they, she's got these like long spindly limbs yeah. that she really uses to her advantage and her like they they do it so that her lips look like they're almost like receding right. and her teeth become really prominent and her eyes are all sunken and yeah the the makeup team did an amazing job in this yeah and she's got it's it's almost like um oh, this is gonna sound weird um her, her body type fits everything they need it to do with yeah. like only minimal nudging in whatever direction. Yeah. Like when she's normal, you know, normal looking, normal looking girl. Yeah. Then when she starts, you know, whatever, uh, you know, dying and stuff, mm-hmm. they just kind of dress her a certain way and she holds her body where she looks that much thinner. Yeah. And that much more, you know, the, most of the makeup's in the face. Yeah. Um, yeah. She looks, she looks like concave at that point. Yeah. Cause I mean, she's, she's, she's skinny, but she's mm-hmm. not like, you know, rail thin or anything but but they man she manages to kind of transform her body and then at the end they kind of basically powder her down and make her look as like into this perfect mannequin she's a perfect figure yeah and it's it's uh it's a really great uh no i sound like an asshole really great body (laughs) casting i guess but no she's she's a great a great actress she's great but she actually plays wendy torrance in uh dr sleep oh shit yeah huh Wow, now I now now I really want to rewatch that. Well, you can watch the <laughs> three hour director's cut that just came out. Oh boy. Well, actually, no, I think it's longer. How I think the exciting. movie itself was almost three hours. I think it's longer than that. Um Yeah, so I the the gore part I could go I, I, I would go a little different for me. Mm. Um how do you feel about the actual uh like the actual rebirth sequence? Um, I, I really thought all the, uh, old white people with their glow sticks was a little hokey. Yeah. Really uh, hokey. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a satanic cult, so mm-hmm. it, there's going to be some like robed It's the 21st wood. century, man. You can't be carrying torches. You just got to get like yeah, a nice you just, camping you, light. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I liked the, her crawling out of this sort of like membrane, like mm. womb like digging her way out of the earth. I am thing. such a sucker for for people digging their way out of a, yeah, out of a grave or something. Yeah. You don't really see it that often anymore. It I doesn't st- happen. Anytime <laughs> anybody asks me uh what the scariest zombie movie I've ever seen was, I mm. always say Michael Jackson's Thriller. 
completely unironically because <laughs> that scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I think it scared me too, actually. And I, and and the, one of the things that creeps me out so much about it is the zombies actually come up out of the graves. Yeah, which generally doesn't happen. In yeah, most you don't. You movies. don't really see that. It's like somebody who looks like they're dead over in that corner, and then and you make a up. noise, yeah. and they stand up, and you're like, "Wait, Kevin!" And then they try to eat your face. Yeah, never um, trust Kevin. No, fuck Kevin. Uh, but yeah, I mean, actually, like clawing your way out of the ground is, is yeah. always always effective. I was also very much like, man, for somebody who just lost all of her fingernails, that's a badass manicure. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the only the. The, the only part about that sequence I didn't like is how she has to walk home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like totally naked and covered in dirt she, she through up, Hollywood. She crawls up out. They're up on like the hills somewhere. She yeah, crawls yeah. up out of this this grave, you know, cov- naked, covered in but dirt. But you know what? Now that I say it, if that were going to happen, Hollywood is the city that that would happen That's in. That's fair. And nobody yeah. would say shit. Yeah. Because it would just, if somebody had said anything, you'd just be like, I'm an extra in a film. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, okay, have a good day. Yeah. My favorite thing about that sequence was she gets out of the, the she rips through that that womb-like membrane. She digs her way out of the grave. And then there's the box. And she opens yeah. the card and it just says, happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> this really nice, like, bubbly sort of print. I was like, that's And then perfect. she picks the box up and walks home. And walks home with it. <laughs> like, yeah. it's strange to me that they show her, like, if you if you show her getting the box. Yes. And then just cut to her being at the house. <laughs> that's fine. Look, no, you we need to done. see more of her mostly naked body. I just, it's just so strange because, like, she's this, supposed to be this perfect creature who's just birthed itself out of the ground. Yes. And then to show her, like, awkwardly Look. walking down a hill. Look, perfect creatures have to walk, too. That's true. Every every deer needs to learn how to walk, I guess. <laughs> um, no, you're you're right, though. There is, there, is, there is something a little bit silly about about that. Yeah. Yeah. I but uh, when she gets home, I think the stuff back at the house is really, really fun. Even yeah. Re- regardless of when Tracy gets killed, I think the scene with Tw- Tracy is really nice. I agree. I Whatever they do to, did to her eyes, that like yeah, emerald that eye, was really, really cool. cool. Yeah, I wonder how much of that was contacts and how much of that was like post. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly yeah. don't know if they had that much money for post. I, I, I think it might have been contacts, but... I mean, some of I feel like some of it had to be color enhanced after the fact. Oh yeah, enhanced probably. Yes, yeah. yeah. I, when you said post, I just immediately thought like CGI, and I was like, no, I no, I was thinking more just like yeah, color good time editing. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, I w- one thing about this movie that I really appreciated, and it sort of reminded me, um, weirdly enough, of a Quiet Place, mm-hmm. is that there's really no background. Yeah. Yep. Nobody. This is this is nobody's origin story yep. in terms of. Who are you? How do you know each other? How did you yep. get to Hollywood? What are you doing? No idea what have how long you been doing? Been, how long she's been living there? Yeah. yeah. How do you know? Because because I think the the closest thing we get to background is uh, Tracy says to Sarah, "What are you talking about? These are your friends." Right. And Sarah says, "No, these are your friends." Right. Yeah. And and that's really the closest to any sort of solid background between these people that we get. Yeah. Is that. Sarah really feels like an outsider because these aren't people that she chose for herself. These mm-hmm. were sort of the people that were thrust upon her as like, oh, you're my friend. These are also my friends. Now they are your friends. Right. And I think I think that's a very relatable feeling. Like, oh, definitely. I think yeah. everybody has felt like at some point in their life, this isn't my group. These aren't my people. I don't really know these people. I'm the weird one out. I'm the one who doesn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And yeah. I think that's one of the things that makes her, as, as much as we were talking about earlier, that she's um, very self-centered and, and kind of egotistical. I think the thing that keeps her human and grounded for most of the movie and relatable for most of the movie is that sense of alienation. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That, yeah. It's, it's just so universal. It's such a huge part of just being a person, especially a person who's a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think that's the most important part about what makes this work for me is that, you know, as we said, she she starts off as um, someone you empathize with and then it turns out she's not that great of a person. Yeah. <laughs> but even saying that feels weird because you, you don't really know that. But yeah. what she is up until the point that she starts her tram- transformation, mm-hmm. she is 100 percent relatable. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it work so well for me is because I can, you know, I, I, I'm not going to 
say I'm I'm above feeling like that to a certain extent at certain points. You know, everybody, everybody does. does. You know, every every now and then you look yeah. around at a conference you might be at and you go, "What the fuck am I doing?" Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's a very relatable state of mind and feeling to have, and mm. they just kind of nudge her over the line with it. Yeah, and that's what makes it that work so well for me. Yeah, and and the lack of a background and the lack of a sort of origin mm-hmm. kind of makes you wonder how long has she been kind of yeah putting up with think, these people like like has she been has Aaron been taunting her have have people been kind of dismissing her or right. ignoring because she's very ignored a lot by her friends uh and and it's sort of like yeah you you can imagine if she's been up she's been working at this for three four five years and and this has been the status quo that whole time that's going to wear you down. That, that's going to sure. prey on your ability to be kind and, and to be empathetic towards other people. You're going to get to a point where you're just like, I f- can't fucking take this anymore. You're driving me insane. Yeah. Uh, and I hate you. <laughs> like, we've all, we've all lived with people, family, friends, people that you love, but you get to a point where you're living together where you're like, I cannot live with you anymore. Right, right. And this movie gives me that feeling amplified like by a million. Yeah. I think in a lesser movie, this starts with her coming to the apartment complex for the first time. Yes. You know? Yeah. And that's not, that's a very different feeling. Uh Uh-huh. You know, it's still, alienation stuff is still there, but that's a very different feeling from what they're trying to go for here, which is exactly what you're talking about, which Mm -hmm. is the the alienation of never, never really fitting in. Yeah. Or at least feeling that way. Yeah. And uh, And kind of not knowing how how did I end up here. Right. Yeah. Like, we don't know as an audience either, and she clearly doesn't know either. Like, how did my life become this? Which I love, because I think, I, I, I am such a huge proponent of show show me the character through the story you're telling yeah you don't need to give me all the backstory blah 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 just yeah. show me what's happening here and and give me stuff about the character by how they're acting in the situation you're putting them in yeah and, and the, the more we talk about this the more i think back to some of the other movies we've already discussed like the the shining i actually think yeah. does a pretty good job of this there, there's some very brief uh, outlines of their history in terms of Jack's alcohol abuse and him hurting Danny, but then you don't really get much else beyond that. Right, and 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 it's just really a story about these people right now in right. this moment. Exactly, and that seems to be like a kind of a recipe for success if you can do that well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before we go, I did want to talk about the music. Because... Oh, I knew it. I, I, I almost I almost brought it up for you because I was like, ah, yeah. God, Look, the minute that movie started, I was like, this is Clay's movie. Also, also one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this movie is because yeah. I think the music is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the music is done by a guy named Jonathan Snipes. He also did the music for um, two, Room 237, the documentary, oh, which has really? amazing music, yeah. which actually, uh, when I bought my record player- Mm-hmm. Room 237 and the soundtrack for Starry Eyes were two of the first albums I bought wow. because I love the soundtracks. And what I think is really great about the soundtrack for Starry Eyes mm-hmm. is he managed to come up with this very haunting melody that when you play when he plays it at the beginning, it feels like it's a it it, it mirrors Sarah's transformation. Because at the beginning of the movie, it's it the first time you hear it, it's a very sort of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's not scary. It's very sort of light and airy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a much more kind yeah, sounding yeah, it's, you know, it's uh, melody. Almost a little optimistic. Yeah. yeah. And then as the movie goes on, he starts dropping in some like minor notes and stuff that yeah. really change the way. It comes across, and then at the end, over the credits, they give you this like really heavy, gnarly yeah. version of yeah. it, you know. And it's it's just a really nice score where he found this melody that can be applied to all of these different um, uh, situations in the movie and, and, and changes in the character. I just think it's really great. Yeah, 
in a, in, a, in a movie that deals thematically at least so much with uh, like death and rebirth and it, it's sort of at least visually it, it infantilizes Sarah a little bit at the beginning yeah um that's a good word I think it's probably the word I was looking for yeah, yeah. maybe <laughs> um it's, very, yeah. it's a very childlike kind yes of yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, there and, and she's she dresses very childlike in the first sure. yeah. half of that movie she's sort of in these like little kind of baby doll style sundresses and and it's very so she has kind of a retro look to her her yeah aesthetic. yeah the way the yeah. way she sort of like uh sweeps her hair back from her face she dresses a lot she dresses like the era she wishes she was in yes like she has kind of a 50s sort of look to her not, yeah. it's not overbearing but no it's just no, no it's it's not a costume but right. it is an aesthetic and i think there's something about that that reads very young mm. and and very sort of naive um because i think i think the costuming in this movie is is really really well done Mm. where when you look around at her friends they all look very contemporary they all look very just like you know normal people wearing some clothes like like nothing super super remarkable about any of their outfits whereas sarah's clothing goes in the first two acts it is that sort of retro girly sort of innocent vibe and then there's that third act where she dons her um she dresses like a prostitute essentially <laughs> look we call them sex workers okay i'm sorry excuse me you mean hookers <laughs> ladies of the night uh her her like thigh highs are even ripped like right fucking crazy um and then in the end she's got her full on after after she dies and gets out of her sweatpants um <laughs> She's Don't got, we all feel that yeah. way when we put our sweatpants on? Oh man, I absolutely think I look like her. Like most Sundays, I I look like her in that <laughs> scene. Um, but the, yeah, then then she gets her Hollywood starlet right. outfit by the end. So I I think I think the costuming is amazingly done. And and not to divert too much from the soundtrack, uh, but I I meant to say earlier, I love that her bedroom is covered in faces. Yeah, because all like headshots of fifties. 40s and 50s stars well and there, there's the whole like like in art there's the whole concept of the male gaze sure yep. and all of them are women yep they're all yep. female faces but they're all still staring at her yeah her whole life is just being looked at and i think on second watch mm-hmm. that opening scene where she's looking at herself in the mirror yeah you get a little bit of an extra spin on it because you realize she's got those faces looking at her but that's what she's comparing herself to yes you know yeah yeah, and and just just being like, she wants to be an actress, so she's being looked at all the time. Mm-hmm. Her day job is being a tater girl, so she's being looked at all the time. Right. She goes home into her bedroom, which is covered in faces, and she's being looked at all the time. Right. And like that's draining. That that will just like grind you down, feeling like you're constantly the object. In, in every situation. I, I that might be really why cool. I'm tired all the time, because this <laughs> Dawn of the Dead poster I have is just staring at me We are all day. sitting in a room that is Full just faces. covered in faces that stare down at Clay while he tries to work all day, yeah, every day. Yeah, but you know, I mean, you know, the way Worf looks down at me doesn't make me feel weird. So. <laughs> he looks down at you with love and respect. Yeah. Um, fun fact about this movie, it mm, actually Clay's was- Clay's Trivia Corner. Yeah, was actually partially funded by Kickstarter. Really? Yes. That's super cool. Yeah, very cool. They had um, they had written the script, and I believe that they had cast Alex Esso mm. already. Um, and then the who plays la- Sarah? Correct. Who plays Sarah? Yeah. Yes. And then they r- raised the last amount. I forget exactly. I think it was like fifty grand or something they needed mm. uh, through Kickstarter, which is nice. very cool. Um, this movie is not on the list. Yes. It is. 73% Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. This is probably a question that will be more applicable mm. the more of these we do. Mm. Do you think this should be on the list? Because if I listed the t- the bottom rung of this, the 200 on this list, I would take off at least three of them it, and replace it with this It's movie. really funny that you should ask that because I actually, not not in a very specific way, but in a general way, I did that exact thing yeah. where I skimmed through the last like 50 movies or so on the list 
And yeah, there were definitely some things on there that I was like, this is definitely better than that. Like, I don't know if it's just that it, it it's sort of so under the radar mm. that maybe it hasn't gotten sort of the... the it's possible, yeah. It, the ratings and the feedback. It's, it's but... got a 73% Rotten Tomatoes score, but the viewer percentage is like 51, so it's not great. Huh. Which is really surprising because I think I... I would be hard pressed mm. to find someone who's a horror movie fan that wouldn't like this movie. Yeah, I mean, I, I so I I wouldn't say that it would break the top one hundred and fifty for no, me. No, probably not. Um, but yeah, I w- if you told me it was one hundred and ninety, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. You know, I'd be yeah, like, absolutely. oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Like, like especially given the budget, it's it's clearly like when you read about it it's clearly a low budget indie film but when you watch it it doesn't feel that way no no it's like, got it's got some like stylistically it feels that way a little bit but it doesn't feel like it, i don't mean that in a bad way yeah it almost that 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 almost feels like a choice yeah like yeah. the way that the friends and stuff that's it feels a little mumble corey it feels like a little bit yeah indie. but that's part you know that's just part of the right. movie in 2014 that's fair that's yeah fair. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you're right. It, it's it's. I think they do a lot with not much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly how I feel. Um, yeah. So I I I would say, I I am honestly having now seen it, kind of surprised at some of the things. Yeah. That beat it out to make it onto this list. Yeah. I uh um I don't know if it's on this list. I haven't looked recently, but I hope Mulholland Drive is on the list. Because uh, God, I hope so. If not, it's it's going to be one of my wild cards. I, I would I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, because this reminded me a little bit of that in that it's a story about how horrible it is to be an actor in Hollywood. Yeah. And I was I was just thinking about how it's funny that movies that celebrate Hollywood are so highly regarded by like the Academy or whatever. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yeah. Well. I, yeah, like La La Land. Oh, it's yeah. oh, it's about movies and yeah, singing and Hollywood. dancing. It's, it's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But for every one of those, there's like ten that are about how much Hollywood sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and and and, to, and most of them are kind of like this. <laughs> yeah, and, and to elaborate a little bit, not not to get too far into Mulholland Drive, but to elaborate a little bit, Mulholland Drive also has to do with these two women. Yeah. Who mm-hmm. have these sort of this sort of weird parallel connection, and I think. You can see that in this movie with Sarah and Aaron. Yeah. Um, where, you know, like I was saying earlier, they're both kind of of the same type, which is how they're going to be judged in Hollywood. Is right. like, oh, you're both like white women of around the same age with long, dark hair. You're you're the same type. Mm. You're going to be going up for the same roles. You have roughly the same amount of experience. Neither one of you is like noticeably more beautiful or noticeably more talented than the other so you're going to be competition yeah and there's there's some of that in Mulholland Drive too where there's like these two women who are both trying to be Hollywood starlets and one is succeeding more than the other despite their obvious similarities right right yeah no I hope we get to talk about that God, I, I, I think we will <laughs> um, one way or another one thing uh just because it reminded me of it now, I didn't talk about it earlier, as far as Erin mm. goes, is one of the mm. things I like about her is that one of the things that, uh, on top of the, p- the fact that she's constantly petty and shitty to Sarah, yeah. I think one of the things that drives Sarah crazy is that Erin doesn't really give a shit. Yes. Because like she doesn't, if she gets a role, she doesn't, whatever. Whereas yeah. Sarah's like, it's her entire life hinges on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a nice, again, they don't bring attention to that really. Right. But it's there under the surface and I think it's really effective. It exists very clearly in just the way the two characters naturally behave in their environment. Yeah. yeah. So, um, is there anything else you want to say about this before we wrap it up? Well, I mean, so in, in terms of body count, mm. how many people? Six out of seven. Six? Yeah. Seven counting, seven counting Sarah. Well, would we say seven then? Doesn't she technically die too? I guess technically, yeah. I guess technically she does. Uh, yeah. Yeah, body count. It's it's interesting. As I said in the first episode, I'm I'm kind of more fascinated by the survivor count. Yeah. And the survivor count in this is very interesting because it's, like you said, she does technically die. Yeah. She's also the villain. Yes. If you want to call her that. She's also the main character. Yeah. So she's a lot of things happen to her. Yeah. Um. Are you glad you watched this? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I just I, tell me how much you love this movie, please. <laughs> make, don't make me feel like an asshole. 
I mean, you might be an asshole. But but I, I very much enjoyed this. I don't think it's something I would have watched had you not recommended it to me. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk to do it. Yeah. Because I felt the same way. I wouldn't have given this a second look if I had gone by the ratings and the mm. picture. Mm. Uh, someone yeah, recommended it to me. Yeah, especially the picture. Oh, it's terrible. It's like, guys, come on. And I am so happy that I watched it. And I think that's why... I'm always looking for like hidden gems, especially yeah, in yeah. horror. Yeah, and I think this is one. I think this is definitely one. Yeah. Well, just wait until I get a wild card pick and I make you watch I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House. Oh, again? <laughs> oh, it's so boring. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to make you Can we suffer. meet in the middle and just go see the new Hansel and Gretel movie that guy's I doing? No, I just, I just, I love your pain. Uh, okay, for you. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, that's going to do it for Starry Eyes, our first five wild card. Um, I hit the randomizer earlier today. Oh. <laughs> and uh, next movie is going to be number 197, Ooh. American Psycho. Oh, shit. Which actually has a lower rating than Starry Eyes. But I'm not going to. I love American Psycho. But. Wow. Wow. This is gonna, that's going to be a really interesting follow up to this one. Yeah. We were talking great. about egotism and, ex- and obsession. Can't wait. And v- we're in the right mindset for yeah. it. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Go watch Starry Eyes. It's on Amazon Prime right now, or at least yes. when this comes out. So give it a watch. And uh, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Clay. And we will see you next time with American Psycho. Bye, everybody. After I return some videotapes. <laughs>